Martin, here we are on a gorgeous autumnal day. Beautiful. We should be blue outside. Sky. We should go outside. Well, it's a bit chilly. It's too late now. We're inside. Oh, but okay. yeah, no, it is gorgeous. It is a bit sharp. It's Mark 1, 14 to 20. We're into the kingdom season. All souls, all saints, remembrance, all of that. Christ the King. What do you make of uh, this week's gospel, though? Mark 1, 14 to 20. So, yeah, so there's a sort of... We, we, we're turning our fo we're turning, changing our focus and the, the kingdom season is a is the sort of prelude to Advent, isn't it? So we're sort of turning our faces around and uh, I'm I'm struck. We, we go right back or not quite to the beginning of Mark's gospel, but we go uh, to uh, Jesus um, preaching, proclaiming that uh, the good news of God um, and uh, that follows immediately from his temptations, which are described very briefly in in Mark's gospel. But what's what seems to be well, what is happening is that, as it were, the temptations were Jesus uh, re re refuting, repudiating Satan, and now declaring that you know the era of Satan is over and the kingdom of God has come. And I think one of the one of the first striking things is that the very beginning of the gospel is uh, the the writer saying this is the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ. Jesus proclaims the good news of God, and it's only as it were at the resurrection that the proclaimer becomes the proclaimed so that the whole gospel is framed in the reality of the resurrection. Mm. You see what I've... Does yeah, that yeah, make yeah. sense? <clears throat> and uh, I, I think one of the things that I suppose strikes me first is that we, we, we tend to... When we use that term kingdom, which, is a, a, which isn't a particularly good translation of the Greek, Basileia, when we use that term, it, it conjures up notions of a place rather than uh, a, pr a presence, a domain, uh, or, or not domain, a dominion, uh, a realm, mm. a sense of, uh, you know, a, a, a whole uh, exercise of power, loving power, that is the realm in which we have been ushered into through Christ. So it's, we, we kind of need to get out of our heads the notion that it's it's there's any kind of place about yeah, this somewhere beyond it, Pluto. It's a it's a way it's a way of being, um, which barely counts anymore these days, is it? Um, uh, mm. Not being a planet, um, but it's it, it's a it's a it's being in a relate in a relationship with God's being and God's dominion is what we're called into, um, and I think I mean, one of the things that's that that strikes me and then what jesus says is that he 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 declares that um that the the time has been fulfilled and that the the kingdom of god or the realm of god or the dominion of god has come near and that uh, we are to repent and uh, believe in the gospel believe in the good news and there's a fourfold structure to that which then gets you you see picked up in other parts of the New Testament. So it looks as if it's almost a sort of baptismal uh, formula that uh, Paul in Romans has: the night is far gone, the day is at hand. Uh, put off the works of darkness, uh, put on the armor of light. So you've got that same fourfold structure, and I think it's just it it it's it's Im important for us to recognise that that all this whole gospel is shaped to draw us into deeper discipleship of which mm. of course baptism is is uh, the 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 foundational event and just to kind of jump forward uh the in the call of the disciples uh grammatically 
the disciples don't become subjects of the sentence. They don't become the, the subjects of the action until uh, they have uh, they respond to the call and they followed him. Hmm. Um, and up to that point, you know, in the couple of sentences beforehand. So there's something going on there that dis discipleship following Jesus is an action where we become, as it were, become the people we're called to be. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it, we, we, we step into the truth about ourselves. We step into that realm of God. Mm. Um, so uh, there's a huge amount of, I'm just in, into the, in these few verses, but it's all about you know, turning our face now to, in anticipation of Advent and Christmas and beginning to see what this is about. Hmm. So, yeah, I mean, you've said quite a lot there. Um, so, so we, but I, I'll, I'll add a few I'm crumbs. Sure you're, you're, <laughs> I'm sure you've got something to say, Mike. You normally have something to say. So Jesus saying, follow me, um, which is both literal and metaphorical, isn't it? You know, physically, follow mm. me, but mm. also follow me, do as I do, you know. Uh, put into practice my teachings. Uh, Lois Tverberg, who wrote the book uh, Walking in the uh, Dust of Rabbi Jesus, talks about that, that how at that time, one of the things you did was, you know, you followed the rabbi around and you were covered in their dust. In other words, you were looking to model your behaviour and your way of being on them and, and, and how they were. And that's something that I think we've lost to some extent. So when when the disciples say to him things like, you know, teach us how to pray, that's because they've been following him and been seeing the difference mm -hmm. that, that it's made and how he is in his praying. It's not, you know, a purely academic question. Um, I, I, I may have mentioned before, I had the privilege of reading to Leslie Newbigin, the great uh, you have, you missioner. Mentioned on a few occasions. Have I? Right. Yes. So, so over so, the years, this has come up. So one of the things he says about about the challenge of, of being a, a missionary in India was he said, you know, in Hinduism, you have this idea of the sadhu uh, or the holy man. And the holy man didn't have any private space, unlike the Christian missionaries. And actually, you know, in a given village, if there was a holy man in the cave on the mountainside, little children coming home from school might go and just sit at uh, the entrance of the cave and just watch him meditating and, and, and allow waves of peace to kind of flow over them from this person. And he said that therefore one of the challenges for the, for, 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 for the missioners was how do they have a private space when actually, you know, one of the things that commended the sadhus was the fact that there was an integrity of being here, whether public or private, that, that, that bespoke the authenticity of their way. And, and, and of course, that's exactly what you find with Jesus when they ask him, you know, teach us to pray. That's on the basis of seeing the authenticity of somebody they ate with, they walked with, um, you know, they, 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 they were with all the time. And when John in 1 John 1 5 says this is the message that we heard from him, that God is light and in him there's no darkness at all. Well, that's what they got from being with him and seeing how he was with the father. These are really powerful things that they're yeah. saying in the yeah. light of their three yeah. year witness. Yeah. So this following, I think, is um, is, is, is freighted with meaning. Um, and then and, and yeah, on the kingdom side of it, I suppose. Uh, um, absolutely. It's not a geographical place. Uh, one way of expressing the kingdom is it's where God's will holds sway where uh, what God wants done is done. So when Jesus says the times are fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand, mm -hmm. repent and believe the good news. In other words, the kingdom of God is as close as you are to me now, and I can turn and live out of that kingdom mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. And where do we live out of the kingdom? Where do we, you know, where does part, a good part of the church say we, we are actually entering into the kingdom and living from it? Worship. You know, the uh, Eastern Orthodox talk about this a lot, don't they? You know, they, if, you, if you start, we start worship with the Lord be with you. Mm -hmm. We are immediately registering. We are the focus of a self-giving love. Mm -hmm. So immediately to register that is already to, to begin to mm -hmm. turn aside and to operate out of the kingdom. 
um, that some of the movements we make in worship, whether it's simply singing, standing, kneeling, are ways in which we are actually embodying that physical movement, if you like, from our kingdom to the kingdom. The bread and the wine at the Eucharist, which, you know, now operate as, uh, as in the kingdom. So they're vehicles for communion. They're not means of me just stuffing my face. Yeah. And, 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 you know, the, I was reminded of this on Sunday when I was at um, Blytheborough and I was looking up as I was presiding in the Eucharist. And, you know, those angels, the wooden angels on the roof. And it felt like they were kind of like opening up for the, you know, the whole cacophony of angels and archangels and the saints uh, kind of singing with us as we were there. But uh, to understand our worship and to enter into our worship, for instance, as part of the way in which uh, we are engaging in the kingdom which is at hand here and now is something I think we don't always remember and we need to be registering. So, so there are two challenges you, you, you've articulated, as I understand mm. it, to anybody called to public ministry. The first is, how are we uh, in public and in private the same person yep. so that uh, people can... We, we are a witness by who we are and the way in which we live our lives in every single aspect of that. Yeah. Um, and that people, you know, like the children sitting at the entrance to the cave, people can somehow catch a sense of mm. that this is about the, the dom dominion of God. Um, and the, the, the second is our intentionality in worship. Mm. What are we intending? Are we intending just to go out through the words in, you know, in a great rush? Do we spend time thinking what we're actually going to do in our sermon? Are we, are we engaging with this, with the, the real sense that this is a formational experience for mm. everybody there, where, where they will be, or we pray they will be, drawn into the presence of God, mm. or aware of the presence that is there? Yeah. Now, I could have put it as succinct, succinctly as that, but I didn't. <laughs> Never mind. I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> we, uh, you, it was very good. Thank you.